of Define Nation, and welcome to another episode of Define Your Health with the Notre Dame Strength through Knowledge. And oh boy, get your seatbelts on, Define Nation, because it's going to be a wild ride today. Yes, I do know. Christmas is right around the corner, and we all love our sweets. Define Nation all loves their cheat day. But there's better choices that you can make whenever you uh, need to satisfy that sweet tooth. And that's what we're going to be talking about today with our very special guest, Don Reed. And Don, I, I gave you a new title, just so you know. It's CCO, okay, which is Chief Confectionery Officer of D Sweets, not CEO anymore. Oh, uh, all right. I'll take that. I like that. Like that? Well, <laughs> That'll well, work for me. <laughs> well, welcome, welcome into Fine Nation. Her list of yummy attributes, is that, can, I, can I say that? All right. The, 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 the tasty, sweet. Um, <laughs> her list of uh, the companies that she has worked with and have carried her product range anywhere from Whole Foods to Chiradelli Chocolates to Draegers out on the West Coast. And Dawn, thank you so much for coming and chatting with us about the evolution of processed foods, particularly those that are sweet. All right. Well, thank you. Thanks for having me. <laughs> yes, I enjoy sweets, but uh, I'm passionate about good sweets well, and, and good food. Say, tell people a little bit about these sweets, because if you are going to choose to eat sweets, and we are, we know that there's going to be sweets somewhere in the month of December. There's going to be some sweets. Somewhere. Yes. Tell them uh, D sweets and really the organic, the non GMO, and, and why I'm such an advocate. Her ginger snaps are to die for. Okay, go ahead. Advocate of yours. <laughs> well, basically, I am passionate about my products. I'm passionate about making food that does not have preservatives, that does not have GMOs, that comes from real food. I just feel passionate about eating real things instead of the manufactured or made up or even the butter substitutes that we used to have like margarine and things like that i'm like never went there never never plan on it if it's grown if it's living and it, it's part of something no problem i'll eat it but if you've made it up and into a chem from a chemical and in a laboratory why would you put that in the in your body when you have no idea what's going to happen well, yeah. and most of your recipes come from your great grandmother or your grandmother. I'm My sorry, grandmother. your My grandmother. grandmother. So yes. tell us about the evolution because you started with custards, which are still on the menu. Yes. We're yes. still finding a vegan way to do those, right? Is we're that, working on it. We're, yeah. right. we're working on it. <laughs> She's no. trying. <laughs> well, my grandmother gave us a recipe for f uh, what she called French egg custard. It was basically, it's a French method of cooking uh, custard. It's a baked custard, bakes in its own um, crust, it does not have a breading on the side of it or anything. It just comes uh, in baked in a pan, and we kind of pop it out and present it really nicely. But that's how we started. And from there, then it grew on to I added different flavors because my son just loves chocolate, so he <laughs> have a chocolate custard tart. And my daughter loves pumpkins, so we made a pumpkin custard tart. The husband likes lemon, so the lemon custard tart. <laughs> yeah, and from there, there's some sweet potato, and other people ask for coconut. And so it just kind of kept growing, and the custard tarts, you know, kind of took off. They took off. They started in California when I was working at this company. I think I've told you this probably before, but uh, I was at a company, and I made this uh, custard tart for their lunch, oh, for yes. some kind of lunch special. Yes, yes, I remember this And story. I brought it in, and it was devoured before the time it was supposed to you know i set it out a little early and it got devoured before lunch even began <laughs> so i said okay i'll just run back home and i'll get the one that i made for my family no big deal they'll never know they won't miss it so i ran home got it set it out it was still before lunch and i pretty much had to guard it so no one would so that the other people would actually get a chance to eat it and i was like okay she's the bakery crazy. bouncer on the weekends <laughs> to find nation the bakery bouncer the, there okay. you go <laughs> I like that. But from there, it was like I was working for a small company. Everyone there liked it. I was like, well, maybe I have something here. And so from that, the idea was born. We just started running with it. And it really took off uh, on the West Coast. And then I moved here. And then once we got here, then we started developing up other products like uh, our Crantini cookie, the cranberry yes. and olive cookie. Um, it's very unique, but everyone people who love it just love it i mean they okay so me down for it <laughs> so, so raul just had a look on his face he's like what the huh yes yeah i'm it's, telling you all you would not think that olives that sweet and that but it does it just it works it yeah, works yeah 
<laughs> so let's dive right in. So we all know really the evolution of processed food started in the late 40s. Um, it really, at World War II was the catalyst making uh, packs for the GIs, and then it rolled over into TV dinners. Right. Now, right. from there, grocery stores have evolved to, as some estimates vary, but basically 80 to 90% processed foods. Yes. And then there's also the food deserts. Uh, in, in, in a lot of times they're in the inner cities. Every once in a while they're in very rural areas as well, too. Right. And so what is your take on how this process has just mutated, how, how all these products have just taken over from having Swanson's uh, TV dinner to <laughs> oh, now, please. you know, 90% of everything in the store, you, you have to search out right. something that's not. The, you have to search out the real food. Unfortunately, it just seems like we got caught up in our whole method of getting things faster. I mean, this country evolved in, from getting things and making things and eating family dinners to okay i gotta be quick i gotta go i gotta take kids out to soccer practice i don't have time to do this i don't have time to do that when really it takes less time to make a meal than you would think but we're so since about the 50s 60s 70s things have just progressed and gotten faster and faster and faster and life just keeps going well and the thing that shocks me is there's so many other alternatives you know i, I mean from whole foods to right. central market to i mean even chipotle uh is jumped on we're gonna get oh we're gonna get into gmos we're not getting into that right now but we're gonna get into it right uh, there's options out there yes. and my personal opinion is it's knowledge people just are not right. equipped with the knowledge they think they have to go to wendy's or mcdonald's or you right. know burger king or whatever it may be well, for a while there, those were the choices that, you know, Whole Foods is rel relatively new to the whole country. And most of the places were just selling the whole, uh, the frozen dinners, the canned foods, which don't even get me started on cans because they're just worthless. But <laughs> <laughs> most of the, the canned vegetables. Um, but those were the only options for quite some time, unless you were actually making real food, which I never stopped making real food because I know it really doesn't take that long. But a lot of people just thought, okay, well, I have to do this. I have to go to McDonald's. And it wasn't until people started saying, whoa, you can get cancer if you're eating this stuff constantly. Mm -hmm. Or you can get a whole bunch of different diseases, including childhood obesity. All these things are linked to the unnatural, over-processed um, foods that we that are so readily available to students and children and, and parents and it's just it's it went crazy we went crazy oh well, we're gonna we're gonna <laughs> get, we are gonna get chaotic here in just one <laughs> second thon and remember the nation this segment is brought to you by the highway for health project remember that childhood obesity is a preventable epidemic visit them today at highway for that's highway f o r health dot o r g hi this is danielle from define your health with danielle giordano strength through knowledge radio show something that is near and dear to my heart is the absolute epidemic of childhood obesity in the united states you know, when I was a kid, my dad used to say, if you're not willing to change something or do something about it, you don't have the right to complain. Well, guess what? I'm doing something about it. The Highway for Health Project is a project to call attention to this epidemic, this preventable epidemic of childhood obesity, to give parents the tools and the resources needed to educate and make the best choices possible for the next generations of Americans. Help me. Help me help the future. Visit highwayforhealth.org today. Again, that's highwayforhealth.org today. Highwayforhealth.org. For 20 years, Nordic Naturals has been dedicated to making the best fish oil on the planet. Their motivation? The heartfelt belief that a single nutrient can change lives. Their love for what they do and the people they do it for drives them to do it right at any cost. That means products that are outrageously fresh, obsessively tested, and passionately perfected. Products that taste so pure, you'll love them. Try Nordic Naturals, award-winning omega-3s today and taste pure love. Available at natural product stores nationwide or at nordicnaturals.com. 
And we are back to Fine Nation with our very special guest, Dawn Reed, who is uh, has a new title today, the CCO, yes, Chief Confectionery Officer of D Sweets. And we are really talking about the evolution of what used to be food. Now we have food-like products for the most part uh, right. in stores. And you absolutely... You know as well as I do, you cannot talk about the subject without talking about GMOs, genetically modified organisms, and the the, the organic issue, and, and we're going to get into BPA lining and cans in a second here, but GMOs, I, I'm, I'm going I'm to give you a minute to just say what. Ever your little heart desires. This is going to be good. Everybody got their seatbelts on. Here we go. Well, basically, GMOs, what, I, I'm still trying to figure out, I guess, what the point is. And I guess the point, again, would be speed or something or to to manufacture things from nothing. Money. Oh, sorry. Oh, wait. there you go. That, oh, wait, that's is that exactly it? it? Oh, man. That's exactly okay. All right. It, it would be money. But, I mean, Lucky it's, guess. it's just so strange that our country is so willing to accept GMOs mm-hmm. as opposed to many European countries that are heavily against the GMOs and really want food that's grown from a real cow or, you know, or, or a real animal or a real plant or, you know, things that are real. Why we are so accepting of the GMOs, I don't understand. Well, and there's a <laughs> friend of mine who is in Chicago and you know, she's Italian, and she goes back and forth uh, to Italy on a regular basis. And it was, I think it was the year before last, she used to bring over Oreos and Hershey's Kisses because they didn't taste the same as the ones they had over there. They would not let her through customs because they said it was a toxic substance. And they confiscated her Oreos and Hershey's. And exactly. They're right. They're right. Exactly. <laughs> they're right. <laughs> I'm sorry to share that, but, yeah, they're right. Those things... I'm- Oreos are terrible for you. Now, yes, I They're, have eaten ter- Oreos, but a lot of it was before I knew. And since then, I think I've had maybe one or two just to remember what they were like. And I'm like, okay, why did I eat this? I'm not really sure. Because <laughs> when you think about it, what, what is in the Oreo? It, it's one molecule just, away from plastic. Yeah. No. That's scary. <laughs> it is. <laughs> that's scary it is. that you would ingest that, that you would willingly put that in your body and think you're doing something good. Well, and, and I think this brings up a, a crucial element to that, uh, the whole subject, really, and that's education. People don't understand. When I do my nutrition classes, most people are like, what is a GMO? Wait, what? Huh? Wait, what do you mean? And, you know, and, and you're you're – physically changing right the dna i mean i i don't care if you spray uh, or spray pesticides on it or not you can't change what the actual plant is and right. and that's what gmo seeds do and and right. I, I mean what i mean they, again that's my opinion is education based i think there's a, a huge lack of knowledge no. but what's your opinion no, I think you're right. I think education is pretty much key to everything here because we don't really educate anymore. I guess we used to have, um, uh, we used to talk about food and nutrition and things like that in school, and that's pretty much one of those things that went away. So people aren't really learning in school. People aren't taught. So those, if you're not learning in school, then you can't teach your kids, mm-hmm. you know. And then so kids and everyone, they're just kind of growing up just not knowing. It's not their not that they want to eat poorly no one wants to eat poorly everyone's everyone pretty much wants to be healthy if they can no one wants to get cancer no one you know no one wants to do the things that are wrong but if you don't know you just don't know and so hopefully more people that are listening will begin to to look up things and i do see you know where there are so many like whole foods and there's trader joe's and there's chipotle like you were saying where they're serving better food Mm-hmm. I've been to restaurants recently that are saying, we're a scratch-made restaurant. And I'm like, that's great, but it's a shame that you have to say that. Mm-hmm. that that's what restaurants, I mean, if I'm going out to a restaurant, I'm expecting you to make the food. But truthfully, there a lot of restaurants aren't either. They're getting their stuff from Cisco or wherever it's convenient so that mm-hmm. they can get the cost down and and sell whatever so that they can make the most profit. Well, and and that brings up when you talk about the convenience of food, you can't get away from that without talking about cans and talking about BPA. And most people are like, but it says it's organic on the label. Well, that's fabulous. That's wonderful. 
But do you know what's leaching into that wonderful organic green bean or, or, or broccoli, whatever it is that you're buying inside of the can? And I think people don't, I think more people don't know about BPA than they don't about non-GMOs or GMOs. That's true. That's very true. Even the, at one point, it seemed like we were catching on and we were getting rid of canned things. But I guess because they started relabeling the cans and making it sound better, mm-hmm. people just assumed that if it's labeled, if it says organic, it's going to be good for you. There's no other problems. And I can understand why people would do that. I mean, it's just, I mean, like we've been saying, it's just about knowing what you're what you're eating. But in reality, I mean, if you really think about it, it's, it's, the cans have never been a good thing. It's not like they've changed and all of a sudden become better. Mm-hmm. And, and, <laughs> and the stuff that's in the cans is not getting in your food. That didn't change. It's just the labeling that changed. Yes. I mean, so much of that. And you really have to be careful when you're going to uh, stores these days because the labeling has changed on everything. I mean, this is true. not only are you, you're paying more, you're getting less. That's one big thing, and that's how they fool everyone all the time. Mm-hmm. Is we, we'll just make it smaller. We'll keep the price point just about the same, maybe raise a little, and we'll make you spend a little bit more. But they, they do it for everything. So now then there's the organic cans. It's like, okay, like you said, that, that's great, but it's still in a can, which we were all, I think we were almost there with the knowledge about cans, and then things changed again. And then, yeah, then the... The company's got wind of it, and they're like, oh, wait a minute. We're going to lose money here. we got to rebrand this. We have to s- sell it in a way that people will think, oh, they're still getting the best things, best quality possible. And and I think that brings us back to ethics and how much different ethics is in American business versus maybe some of our counterparts in other parts of the world. And that's sad to say that we have to be so how can we say, uh, non-relenting once we have the knowledge. You know, it's one of those things that once you have the knowledge, you can never unknow it. Right. You can never look at something the same way. Right. Uh, And we are going to get back into that labeling issue right after this break, Miss C. C Oh, <laughs> and remember to find Nation, this segment brought to you by Wonderfully Raw. Organic, non-GMO snacks bring taste that will bring a smile of amazement to your day. Visit them today at mycocoroons.com. That's my dot com. Hey, Define Nation, this is Danielle, and finding nutritional density in snacks these days can be a real challenge, especially for the little ones in your world. When I reach into my pantry, I grab a bag of Wonderfully Raw. Whether it's their Cocoa Rune, Brussel Bites, Dippers, or Snip Chips, I know both my taste buds and my hunger will be satisfied. See the wide variety of flavors sure to please all members of your family at MyCocoRunes.com. That's M-Y-C-O-C-O-R-O-O-N-S dot com. Hey, Define Nation, this is Danielle from Define Your Health Strength Through Knowledge. When I'm out racking up the miles on my bike, safety is always top of mind. And that's why Giro is the only choice when it comes to my protective headgear. Giro uses the latest innovative proven technology of MIPS. That's multi-directional impact protection system. In both their snow and biking helmets, Giro is first rate and first in innovation. Giro is on the cutting edge of a new frontier through safety of the rider and championing the spirit. There simply isn't a better helmet whether you're hitting the road or on the slopes. Be daring and live your dreams. Always be safe with Giro. Visit them today at Giro.com. That's G-I-R-O.com. And we are back to Fine Nation with our very uh, special guest, Don Reed, who has an extensive background, not just in sweets, but really the food industry as a whole. And we're so lucky to have her on today. And we finished the last segment talking about BPA, talking about GMOs. And one of the things that came up was labeling. And that's something that I really want to speak to. Now, my dad told me when I was very, very... We chitlin. Um, he told me when I was very small, if you have to hide something, Danielle, you know it's wrong. And it amazes yeah. me 
how much lobbying, how many millions and millions of dollars are spent simply not to let people know there are GMOs inside of their food, but yet those same people will talk blue in the face to tell you that they're completely safe. And all I said is, well, that's what Monsanto said about Agent Orange 30 years ago, too. But anyway, we won't go there. <laughs> but what is your take on legislation, lobbying? Um, you know, you have groups like, you know, GMO Free USA, obviously Project uh, Non-GMO, the verification up right. in Canada. Uh, what's your take uh, on how this is kind of unfolding and where it may go in future years? I think at some point there, there will be labeling and full disclosure. I mean, it's just going. I think people are heading in that direction. People will start to demand it. It's but those it millennials. Is be, yes. It's yes. those millennials. You're right. Thank God for the You're millennials. Right. You're right. Because, yeah, a lot of us are, are the older crowd might just, this is what we have. This is what we're used to. We're just going to keep on going. But it Don't really take away is, my Oreos. Really. No, I'm joking. <laughs> Oh, a lot of people might say that and might actually, you know. You have something against Oreos, really, you are an American, right? Really. That would be the first thing they'd throw out, right? Okay. Exactly. I'm exactly. sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> but I think, down, like you said, the millennials, it, things are going to change. But it's just going to take, it's going to take time because there is so much money on the other side that just, for some reason, doesn't want to label things. Really, what's the big deal? If it's good for you, if it's okay to eat, then just put it on the label. No big deal. What, what what's why are we trying to hide it? I mm -hmm. mean, there there is no need to hide anything. People just as people um, evolve in their education and their understanding of what they're eating and how it's affecting their lives and their future and the health of their families, things will start to change, and companies will have no choice. I think right now companies are just trying to save the money that they have. They know mm -hmm. what's going to happen. They have to have some lead time to make those changes so they're pushing back so that they can adapt further down the road or well, die <laughs> well and, and, die. and you know i think it makes a huge statement you know kroger just came out recently this week saying that they were going to incentivize farmers mm -hmm. that used heirloom seeds non-gmo seeds right and farmed organically that they would guarantee to purchase their crop right I think that's significant. I mean, Kroger owns a lot of grocery stores. It's not just it Kroger. Is. For those of you who do not know, I mean, what do they own? Like 10 different chains or something that all uh, fall yeah, under I the Kroger umbrella? A lot. They're yeah, massive. I, They're they, huge. They really are. And then you also had Costco that came out this same week because, you know, the non-GMO salmon got approved, even though if you look at it, uh, uh, the, yeah. just, just, <laughs> it, you know what, just Google it, Go to Facebook, type in GMO salmon, you'll see a ton of stuff come up. But right. Costco came out saying that they will not sell this. I think that's yeah, saying it's something. It is. Um, when companies are stepping up like this, what's your take? It is. It, and it makes a big difference because, and I guess that is part of the, was part of the problem is that companies only wanted to buy perfect looking fruits, mm -hmm. vegetables, things like that, which, you know, in nature, things aren't always going to be perfect. If they're growing, if there's there's weather involved, there's a, a lot of different factors involved, things are not going to look perfect. However, right. on our shelves, we all want everything to look the same. Apple should look the same next to us, and the one next to that should look the same. And really, that's not what it's about. It's about what you're putting in your body, not what it looks like going in. Well, and your body regenerates, I mean, literally, your entire body regenerates every eight years. So you are not the same person. Right. Physiologically, you are not the same person you were eight years ago. And it kills me when people say, but it's just food. But, you know, I have to eat. You know, really, how much is this going to hurt? Okay, what you eat is what your body makes your cells out of. Newsflash, your cells are you exactly <laughs> they're you there you go there's Hello. a connection <laughs> they're you and, and it just it amazes me how there's just this just lack of urgency and, and right. again i think it goes back to knowledge right but right. i think the millennials are also driving this yes. i think the, uh, millennials are going to be great uh, yes. for the future of food right and so eventually Monsanto, Carhill companies like them, um, you know, well, I, they have to hit a public relations nightmare. I mean, eventually, my hope would be they go bankrupt, but I don't know. 
I don't think that's probably going to happen, but I do think they will adapt. <laughs> I'm being optimistic. I think, <laughs> I think they will adapt. I think with things uh, like Kroger and Costco taking the lead and them being such a big part of the market, that that is going to drive things and start to change the really big ship that's in the middle of the water that's going one direction. And so it's probably going to take a while for that ship to go and turn completely around uh, and head back in the direction it needs to head back into. But it will happen. It will. Uh, I, at least I hope it will. <laughs> well, and, and, and my hope is that it will at some point. And I think we're going to look at processed foods and GMOs in maybe 40 years the way that we looked at cigarettes. And I know that a lot of people compare right. a lot of things to the tobacco industry and what we went through in the tobacco industry. But it's the truth. I mean, you right. had doctors saying it's perfectly safe. Yes, they did. What one of the most famous camel ads ever is a doctor smoking a camel behind his desk. I mean, right. I, you yes. know what I'm saying? I truly believe that's where we're heading. Um, I think and, you're right. And, you know, I, I think there's hope. I, no, I think I think you're exactly right. But, you know, the future people will start to understand and they'll just naturally start. I mean, there are so many people that are looking to small internet companies now to get their groceries from. There's so many more options for people to find food uh, on the internet, just locally. So things are changing, but really they're changing back to, you know, what they should be. And Don, you know that I look out for Define Nation, and you have done something really super cool for all members of Define Nation, and that's give us a special promo code. Now, what's your website that they can go on and use this promo code? It's D Sweets. That's D as in Dawn. <laughs> S W E E T S dot com. And the promo code Define Nation is Define. 30 and that's d-f-i-n-e and then the number three and the number zero and that's going to give you 30 percent off any order off of dawn's site and we're so special this is her highest discount that she has given i know you love me of course <laughs> and defy nation she is also putting a gift certificate for get some free sweet grub uh in our prize pack that we are going to give away with a trivia question from this show it'll probably be gmos uh, a trivia question <laughs> from this show so dawn i definitely i want to thank you for being on the show today and i know we could talk about this for another two hours yeah we could we could we <laughs> could all right define nation and before we part i have to tell you about one other of our partners that are doing something very special for the christmas season you guys all know how passionate i am about the highway for health project and highway for health foundation well, our friends over at Total Balance USA are stepping up to the plate. This is what they're doing to Nation. If you go to TotalBalanceUSA.com and you put in the promo code define tb 40 that's D-F-I-N-E-T-B, the number four and the number zero. Any purchase that you make is going to get 40% off their whole apparel line, the 2015 and the 2016 and they're going to give 10% of their proceeds back to the Highway for Health Foundation. So, Define Nation, go check them out. Check Don out, too, because we love discount. We love coupons here. We're coupon people. We like coupons. All right. That works for me, too. That works. <laughs> I'm a coupon person, too. All right, Define Nation. Until next time, motivated, dedicated, and highly recommended. Bye-bye. <laughs>